Welcome to WatchGuard's Daily Security Byte. I'm Corey Nockreiner. Thursday's story is the car hacking revolution has begun. You probably remember a few weeks ago when I talked about the latest car hack, Jeep Cherokee's Uconnect system was proven vulnerable by two security researchers who previewed uh, their actual hack to Wired magazine and talked about what they were going to disclose at Black Hat. Well, as you know, Black Hat has come and gone. And the first update to car hacking is the fact that you can now get the full paper on Charlie Miller and Chris Velasek's Uconnect uh, or Jeep Cherokee car hack. I won't go into a ton of detail on this, but be sure to check out the blog post associated with this video. The white paper is a fascinating read. They talk about how the actual wireless access point in this system was a actual weakness. They talk about how there was a certain port that was listening even on the public carrier network that this car was on. And they basically show you how they found vulnerabilities in a number of systems systems to eventually get to the car's ECUs or the car's network and the other computers it uses. But the reason I'm talking about a car hacking revolution was that was only one of many automotive attacks that were at Black Hat and other security conferences this week. There's also a story about how researchers found vulnerabilities in Tesla's Model S car. I won't go into a ton of detail, but researchers did find vulnerabilities that allowed them to gain control of a Tesla Model S car too. Now there's some good news here. First of all, the researchers said Tesla's Model S was a little more challenging to hack. It didn't seem quite as easy as some of the stuff found in the Uconnect system. Furthermore, Tesla has already fixed this vulnerability and they took advantage of a very important mechanism to do this. Apparently, Tesla's Model S supports over-the-air updates for its infotainment and GPS system. So this means when there is a flaw, Tesla doesn't need to recall the car. They can actually push updates to their customers. At another security conference called USENIX, there's also some interesting research on an attack against the insurance dongles you can put in your automobiles. Maybe your insurance company has asked you to plug one of these in to lower your premiums, but when you have this plugged in, they can monitor your speed and stuff like that. And of course, it calls home to your insurance company and shares that information. Now, this, of course, connects to your car's network, and it also connects to a carrier to send this data over the internet. And these researchers showed how they could take advantage of this flaw to specifically uh, force the brakes on a Corvette simply by sending a specialized text message. So kind of a scary flaw. But again, this one has good news compared to the Jeep Cherokee issue, because even these dongles allow for over-the-air updates. And lastly, there is just one other interesting car hacking story, more for the legal issues around it. Apparently, two years ago, researchers found vulnerabilities in the specialized chips and tokens that Volkswagen can use to start cars. You're probably familiar with digital key fobs. Well, apparently there's chips in Volkswagen's key fob and in the car that if Volkswagen doesn't sense the key in proximity, it won't allow you to start your car. Anyways, two years ago, researchers found out how to defeat defeat this system, but apparently Volkswagen sued them so they couldn't actually disclose this research until two years later. So anyway, as you can see, there's a ton of researchers focusing on car hacks, which means there's probably some black hat threat actors focusing on them as well. Now, for car hacks, there's really no strong consumer takeaways other than updating. Hopefully, your manufacturers will implement over-the-air updates, because I doubt the average consumer is going to go through a whole lot of rigmarole to patch their car. That's it for today's story. Thank you for watching.